This video has been sponsored by Squarespace. Yet again, I'm stuck where I am on the rebuild of the Jaguar F-Type SVR. So last time we repaired all of the structural parts with all the tin work on the front of the car with a new crash bar and a few other bits and also replaced this corner of suspension. And in theory, at this point, I should be able to start bolting body panels back onto the car, but that's not the case. And the main reason for that is this wire in here. Because we're missing the plug for the headlights and also the plug for the math sensor, which is here, we can't start reassembling the full car. And I'm scratching my head with what to do with that exactly because to buy that part from Jaguar including the new jump point box is a thousand pound and that's because you're not just replacing this part here you're replacing the whole piece of loom from kind of back there somewhere to up here so that's why it's expensive so while I try and figure out a solution for that that's going on hold so that means that we're gonna have to turn our attention to a job which I am definitely not looking forward to and that is the interior. Obviously the interior is actually in quite good condition. All of the leather and everything's nice, but the airbags have gone on the dash and the steering wheel. Luckily no curtain or seat airbags, it's just those two. So I've got to try and sort this out somehow. And this is where things carry on getting silly because a new dashboard in this specification, which you can't order brand new anyway, it's gonna be made to order I believe, is over 3,000 pound. And I don't wanna spend that on just a dashboard because then still I've gotta buy the airbags and everything like that. So I'm gonna be like four, five, £5,000 into replacing this interior. Which I don't know about to you guys, but that just seems a little bit ridiculous. I think what I'm gonna try and do first, well, I haven't actually got a dashboard, so we need to go and get one. So I'm gonna go and see a guy called Dan who I've been talking to on Instagram and he's got something special and he's gonna be able to help me out with a few parts and you'll see exactly why. So it's time to fire up the trusty caddy van and head down to somewhere near Essex. How cool is this? So this is a one-off F-Type. It's an F-Type LM. So this was built for a Le Mans race in 2014-ish, but it actually never ended up being completely finished and has ended up here. So engine-wise, it remains roughly the same apart from with forged internals and a bigger supercharger making somewhere between 650 and 700 horsepower. But the body itself of the car has been widened by eight inches to make room for bigger, wider wheels and also completely custom suspension with all new arms and, well, everything. And then this is the main difference right here. So the car isn't gonna have a windscreen or a roof. It's gonna be open top with no windscreen. So all the bugs will be going straight in your face. But from here backwards, everything else is gonna have to be custom because there is no F-Type with a back end like this. So that's gonna be a lot of work. So this here is the hub for the car. As you can see, it looks nothing like one off an F-Type. And that's because this car is gonna be using center locking wheels. So it only has one wheel bolt, essentially a wheel nut, should I say. And that is nothing like an F-Type. All of these arms are mounted in completely custom places, so there's not really much F-Type left. So I just want to give a massive thank you to Dan for letting me have a look around this car and also letting me have a rummage around through his parts bin. So Dan is essentially converting that car from what was supposed to be just a race car into a road legal F-Type LM. So he's got a hell of a job on his hands, but I'm looking forward to see exactly what he does with it. So I am now back and Dan has hooked me up with a bunch of parts, but the main thing that he's sorted us out with is the dashboard. So this is a complete leather dash, which is not what I need for my car because mine has kind of swayed here, swayed all over here, swayed here, swayed everywhere and blue stitching which this one doesn't but this panel here where the airbag goes is the same now the great news is for you guys if you're following the same journey as me and rebuilding an f-type dan has got two cars worth of parts that he's going to be selling i'm going to leave a link to his instagram in the description and down here as well but if he wants to get the most out of selling these parts then he wants to be doing it on a website which he built using squarespace squarespace is the all-in-one platform that you can use to help build and run your own website with super easy to use templates using squarespace you you can easily design a professional standard website at a fraction of the cost. And even better than that, because you don't have to use a third party to build this website, you can easily make small changes at no extra cost. And say for example, like Dan, you're looking at selling some items, you can very easily add an online store to your website. And then you can effortlessly monitor your stock and add new items and take other items off as they go out of stock. 
So whether it be for online marketing tools, analytics, or e-commerce, Squarespace has all the tools to help your website run as best as possible. And even better than that, using discount code ChrisSlicks, this is gonna save you a whole 10% off your first website or domain name. You can't say no to that, but for now, thank you Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Let's get to work on this jag. So here is my plan of action. I've got one dash here, which I can use for reference to know where the bolts are for the one that's in the car. And I'm going to have to just take that one out and then see what I can do to make the stuff of that dash fit this dash or vice versa or just make something work so I can keep that individually specced SVR interior. Whether it's going to work or not, I have no idea, but the first thing I've got to do regardless is get the broken one out, so that is the first stage of the process. If I'm being real with you, I've been dreading doing this because I've never done a dashboard in my life. I hate dealing with interior trims at the best of times, and this is about as fiddly as interior jobs get, so I've just got to do it, work my way through it bit by bit, and hope that I don't break too much. So I then set about dismantling the full interior of this Jaguar F-Type, starting with all of the clip-on panels. Now I have had a little bit of help here in the form of an email from someone that used to work at Jaguar, I believe, and they said that you can just remove the top section of the dash, but there is still quite a lot to remove, but as far as dashboards go, apparently they can get a lot worse than this. So the next thing that I had to remove was the kind of full center console and infotainment system, so all of the trims come off, which reveals a bunch of T20 screws there's countless amounts of them so it's just a case of undoing all of those and hoping stuff pops out and luckily they did I managed to get the screen out which was a good start and then carry on undoing those T20s and started to remove more and more from the interior of the car now I did find something that worked quite well for me was kind of nipping to and from bits if I got stuck on something not to dwell on it for too long to try taking something else off and then coming back to it in a little bit because otherwise I think you can very quickly lose your head doing a job like this. So there is part of the infotainment system removed and also the trim beneath the steering wheel. The next thing I want to do is the kind of center vent which comes out of the dash. It's quite a common thing for these to fail so I'm going to have a look at this while it's off the car and see if I can repair the system which makes this come up and down. So the first thing that comes off it is the speaker trim and then this reveals a bunch of again T20 screws which hold in the speaker and also this trim too. And some of these were a little bit concealed, so I had to get like a longer screwdriver with a T20 bit on it to get down to those, because they weren't the easiest to see either. It's not the first time I've been told I need a longer tool. And that was the rear part of that vent loose and ready to come off the car, but it was still secured at the front, so I did find some more T20 screws at the front here near where the screen sits. And once those were out, I could unplug the heater vents and get it off the car. The next thing I wanted to try and remove was these kind of side handles that go around the centre console and all around there. I don't know the proper name for them, but they were quite tricky to get off. Not as easy as what you'd think. So to get these off, what I had to do was remove the gear stick trim. This is kind of the first layer to this, which reveals a couple of bolts, but there's some more underneath the second one. And to release that, you have to take the trims off the side of the kind of centre console. And the only way to get that off on the passenger side is by taking the glove box out. So that was the next job to do. Luckily this was not too challenging to be fair, there's four bolts holding the glove box in, two inside it and two underneath it and a couple of electrical connectors and then the glove box was free from the car. I'm praying that when I put all this back together with the new dash that the glove box works flawlessly because I couldn't get it to shut before but we'll see. The only thing holding the driver's side on was a couple of clips so we could pull that off and then we could concentrate on the passenger side one which is a bit more complicated. We were struggling with this trim for a little while but after a bit of playing around Liam got the hang of it. One. What do you reckon to that? Oh, that was absolutely sensational. So how did you do it? Just pulled it. Okay. Literally just went like this. <laughs> nice, so that's an hour wasted then. And once that was off, that revealed the last six bolts that we need to take off to remove the kind of gear stick trim and get to those last final few bolts holding that little handle in place. And then the last thing we need to do before we start taking the bolts out for the dash is taking the clocks out because there is a couple of bolts behind here which hold the dash to the frame. This was an absolute doddle, a couple of trims and one bolt hold this in and then just an electrical connector on the back. There's been nothing so far which has been too difficult really in regards to taking the dash out, but I am dreading putting it back in because remembering how it all goes back together is a completely different story. So then it was time to take out the bolts which hold the top of the dash to the frame and I think there was about between 10 and 12 bolts that do this, so it wasn't too bad. Most of them are pretty accessible apart from the ones right at the top by the windscreen which weren't the easiest to get to but still perfectly fine. 
So then the dash was loose and it was jiggling around inside the car ready to come out. So we got in position, set the cameras up and pulled the dash outside of the car. Thank God that is finally done. There was a few wires that we'd forgot underneath the dash on the passenger side. But after those were disconnected, it came straight out. I had definitely been worrying about doing this and been overthinking it as well. So it was actually not too bad once you got stuck into it. You got it? Yep. <sighs> So once we were happy that the frame of both the dashboards did match up, we could then turn our attention to the last airbag which had deployed in the car, which was the steering wheel one. This was actually really easy to do. Two holes in the back of the steering wheel, stick a screwdriver in there, and then release the spring and it came off the car. But I did have a problem here. Oh, they melted there, that's the question. Where's that little pick? So what can happen sometimes when an airbag deploys is that the plugs melt to the airbag itself because it's got so hot when that explosion happens. And unfortunately, that has happened in this case. So I'm not gonna be able to release these plugs off the airbag with ease. So I'm gonna have to cut the cables. So we're gonna have to replace that section of loom at a later date, but then we can remove the earth and then that airbag is off the car as well. Easy. Light work. Light work. Light work. So there is old dash out of the car and here is the new one. As you can see, there is some differences. So this has the suede top with the blue piping and blue stitching where this one does not. So we want to try and get this stuff off here and put it on here before that goes back in the car. And I'm not able to do that. But Liam is. Why can't you do it? So we've now got both dashes out of the car and I need to take them to a local trimmer to see what we can do with it. So I'm going to go and try a few local places and hopefully someone's going to be pretty positive and we can get them turned around pretty quickly because the key here is speed because I need to be able to remember how it all goes back together and even though I filmed it, it's not always the most helpful it's, I've got to keep it fresh in my brain so we need to get this done fast So I then load up the new dash and the old dash into the van and go hunting around Leicester to see what trimmers I can find that want to tackle this job so that is the dash now dropped off with a company called Auto Trim, which are in Beaumont Lees in Leicester, so not too far from me. And hopefully they can sort the dash out pretty sharpish, but it's not gonna be an overnight thing, unfortunately. I was kind of hoping to be able to do it like ASAP, but they'll get it done pretty quick, I'm sure. I've got faith. So we've got to find some more stuff to do on the Jag, but luckily Dan has given us some more parts than just the dashboard. So we have also got a new steering wheel airbag. We've got a little elbow for up here, which isn't the right part looking at it. Oh well, so that doesn't matter. Um, we've got some new sensors for up here. These are basically like a bonnet latch sensor, I believe. So I think I need to change those over, which shouldn't be too bad. You can kind of see where it is there. So yeah, that needs doing. I've got two new wheel arch liners. I've got this plastic section here which I believe goes about, goes somewhere there. And he has also sorted us out with a new air box as well, which is very, very handy, but it does mean that I didn't need to buy this math sensor just here. So that was a bit of a waste of money, but it worked out around the end. So I can actually remove this bit of intake pipe here, which had a very, very small amount of damage and I wasn't gonna change it to be honest, but I've got a new perfect one, so I may as well stick that one on instead. So all I had to do was get this one in position, but it didn't wanna quite go in as easily as you'd expect. So I ended up splitting it into two parts, the muff and that top section of pipe, fitting that and then fitting the airbox to that into the rubber grommets, which mount it to the car.
one job down, on to the next one. So let's have a look at these bonnet release sensor things. I think these basically just operate to tell you whether the bonnet is open or closed, and I believe they get damaged when the car is involved in a crash. So better to be safe than sorry, and just to replace them, then I know I'm not going to have anything to worry about. Hopefully the actual latch itself is perfectly fine. I can't see a reason why it wouldn't be, though. But after five minutes of spanner in, that's done as well. So where are we up to? Let's have a quick recap before we carry on. We've got the dash out and at the trimmers, waiting for that to come back so we can put that back in with the new airbag. We have got the new uh, bonnet sensors in, we've got the airbox on, and now we're waiting for a solution on the wiring for this headlight and muff, and also waiting for the wing for the passenger side. So we are getting there, but there's some hurdles to get over. So as you can probably tell by the state of my garden, it's the bumper where we're going to be turning our attention to next. And we've actually got three of them. I've got this brand new one here from Jaguar, which is an SVR bumper. I've got the original SVR bumper off the car, which is obviously heavily damaged. But I've also got this standard facelift bumper as well, which we can use for parts. And speaking of parts, we've got even more of those just here. So the next step is trying to build up this new F-Type bumper to make it complete so it's ready to go on the car when the time's right. And it's definitely a bit of a jigsaw. I think the best place to start here was taking the centre grille off this second hand facelift bumper which came with this grille quite handily and luckily the grille is exactly the same on the standard model as it is on the SVR, the only difference is the badge which you can transfer over from one to the other. So once that's removed from that standard bumper I can then stick it all straight into that brand new SVR bumper. Now I've got to say I've never actually bought a bumper brand new from a dealership before so it was quite nice to actually know that everything on there is in perfect condition as you'd expect it would be. I know that sounds daft but it's just like a bit of a novelty thing for me. I've never had that before. But once the grill was swapped over and bolted into place, then we could start moving on to the next bits. One of the bits that I was keen to get on was the SVR badge, which really identifies this car over a standard one. And then we could start popping in things like parking sensors. But unfortunately, at this point, the weather took a bit of a turn. So I dragged the new bumper inside and then started fitting the rest of the grills, the washer jets and all the trims which go on the back of the bumper too. The ones from the passenger side I managed to save from the old bumper but the ones for the driver's side are all brand new. So we've got a mixture of old parts and new parts here but luckily all of the old ones are in pretty good condition considering it's such a low mileage car so I don't think you can actually tell the difference. So there is all of the grills in that new bumper but there is still more to go. Right, so the next piece and the final piece actually for this bumper which I can do is the splitter and I can't believe this actually survived the crash but it did and I've still got all the fixings from the old bumper so it should be quite easy to put on. So I pulled all of the clips off the old bumper and transferred them onto the new bumper as I already said luckily somehow the bottom of the bumper completely survived so I was actually able to save all of the fixings and fittings from that bumper and move them over to this one. And now those are in place I can start bolting up the three sections of that lower front splitter and we can now see a complete bumper. And that is the bumper back in one piece and well, let's say one piece, it's made out of about 50, but we got there in the end. Now, there is still some bits I need. I need a washer jet and I need a parking sensor, but we're most of the way there and it is looking the dog's danglies, to be fair. I'm getting excited now, I can start to see kind of the finished picture, because I've not seen this car in the flesh looking complete yet, so... I think it'd be rude now not to go and see what this looks like on the car. I don't know why, but sticking that front bumper on just feels like a big deal to me. It just hasn't up until this point felt like I've actually got an F-Type SVR until now. I'm really pumped to get this done. It's so easy to forget while you're so close in on a situation looking at all these little minor problems that realistically the end goal that you're working towards slowly piece by piece is something that not long ago I'd have only dreamt of owning and to me that's a little bit crazy. Especially considering most of it is thanks to this little Halfords toolkit. It's probably the best £200 I've ever spent. And one thing that's even crazier to me that only two years ago or so I'd have been paying someone to do my brake pads and my oil changes and things like that and now I'm taking a dashboard out of a Jaguar F-Type so it just goes to show no matter how stupid you are, you can learn it. But anyway, let's not get too caught up with that. I need to go and pick this dash up, but unfortunately, you're going to have to wait until next time to see it. So until then, make sure you subscribe, make sure you like this video, and I'll catch you next time.